Okay, well, I was drilling up there and I, man, I just punched through the top plate, nicked that three quarter inch copper water line. Hey guys, this video was brought to you by SPAN. Hey, it's Joe Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric, and today is a test in expecting the unexpected. Uh, peripheral skill sets come in handy and enduring friendships. We survived even though he did make a good penetration with a nice sharp bit of the copper plumbing pipe, but no big deal. <laughs> this dude's got skills for days. So come along with us, let's see what happened. We're now ready to pull the big wire. All right, we have got two feeders, one aughts. We've upsized them intentionally to reduce voltage drop so that we're gonna have a nice, pure, true 100 performing amps at the sub panel for the wood shop and 100 amps at the generator. That's gonna be a big boss. What size KW are you can 24 kilowatt if it was on liquid propane, but because it's on natural gas, it's wimpy. It's 21 kilowatts. 21 kilowatts, which is beautiful. Instead of 100 amps because Natural gas is not as efficient as liquid propane. Hear that? Natural gas generators produce at a lower power than the liquid propane, but also come at a lower cost, generally speaking, operating cost. So, and more readily convenient. You don't have, you don't have LP on premises, right? No. We're gonna pull the control wires, the feeders. Bruce is up top in the garage, which is right through a hole over there. And then Tom is gonna be in the basement. I'm gonna relay here in the middle and we're gonna to try to just feed it through nice and smooth. We'll kind of just go, we'll have a rhythm of like, you know, about the, as far as your arm can reach, it's about three feet, four feet, and we'll just do that together in nice, steady unison, pulling and feeding right through here. All right, so what we're doing here is taping our feeder onto our 20 feet of EMT, and that's gonna fish us through this bulkhead. Um, that's the finished space, finished guest room here in the basement. All right, Bruce, nice and easy. So do you want to come, do you want to turn here and go that way? Or do you want to go out and across? Yeah, good question. What, uh, what it's you what you down? want. Huh? What do you want? I, I think I'd, if we can, I'd run down this chase here in case I ever did finish this off. Mm -hmm. Then this area could be chased off without sacrificing all that space. Yeah. Look at that, I snapped that right off. As actually the cable just went boop and popped right through it. Here's one of the things, when you're fishing wires with people, you have to understand he's got an insulated wall between me and him. I've got a furnace in my background making all this noise. And the worst thing we can do is not communicate well. So hollering through the house, but you gotta prepare your customer. We're gonna be making some noise today. That's just workmen being efficient and communicating well. Put their mind at ease, noise is normal, and then communicate like you mean it and get the job done. So we're ready for the next one. I've got a little bit of extra, which will allow us to strap it up nicely here, there, and then these will, I don't know if we wanna, if you wanna zip tie the generator com with. Tie, but we'll wait till we get to the end and make sure so I got, if I've if got plenty of slack, I'll bring a little more slack back that way. I like it. Do you wanna send me that conduit for round two? So you wanna wrap up the leading edge of your pole so that it's nice and tight and as smooth as possible, but you also wanna wrap up your trailing edge right here with the conduit and wire overlap, and that's because sometimes you have to pull it back. If it gets snagged or hooked, you have to be able to pull it back. So you just want the whole thing to be smooth, unified existence, and that is plenty to hold it. Tape it well, you never lose a fish because labor is the most valuable part of every project. Ready, Tom? Yep. Guys, guys, I need to get over it. <laughs> I just need to move past. And that's exactly what we're about to do once I get over these plumbing pipes. You didn't stop me. I was underneath the plumbing pipes. How could you do that? I thought, I thought we were friends. <laughs> We 
We've got our wire pulled down to the basement. Now we're ready to mount our basement sub panel, which is this Siemens 120, it's 125 amp rated. Okay, well, I was drilling up there and I, man, I just punched through the top plate, nicked that three quarter inch copper water line. Tom was quick to respond, shut off the water and then opened a faucet here in the basement to drain the system because that whole system is going to drain through that, you know, all the way up two stories, it's going to drain through that little pinhole. So open the system, drain it out, and uh, he's got copper plumbing supplies on hand as well as the skills to sweat. I can just barely sweat copper, but when you've got all that, a moist condition like that, those sweats are hard. So I'm going to leave it to the pro. While you're present, do you want that panel to be spaced out with a half inch reveal for drywall or um, flush? I would put it with a half inch reveal for drywall just in case that happens. Mm -hmm. okay. This video is brought to you by Span. Span has revolutionized the home electrical panel that hasn't changed in a hundred years. Click on this link for more about Span. SPAN provides the intelligent solution to avoid those costly service upgrades by managing and monitoring electrical loads in a home. For instance, the SPAN drive, which is an electric vehicle charging apparatus, integrates with the SPAN smart panel. It's a simple, intelligent solution. It prevents overloading the panel, which would prevent costly service upgrades. Um, your vision on the FS100, where would you like this to sit? You said so, surface of the drywall. Yeah, so um, I mean, we could mount a board here or something like that. Do you want to put it uh, somewhere in this middle thing? Yeah, I like having it as close to the main breaker for yeah. performance as possible. So mm -hmm. if it's sitting like right there. Yeah. And are you thinking to go ahead and slide a piece of drywall in there so that it's on the finished material? Or how would we oh, pull I that see off? What you're saying. Um, so how does this mount? Just on the outside, right? Correct. So if if we just put a, I, I mean, I got scrap lumber. If we, we put a two by four or two by six mm -hmm. here to mount it to that's flush. And then if and when, uh, when I get ready to do the drywall, oh no, but how does this feed through? Right, possibly a piece of liquid tight into the panel here, but that's hard to finish nicely in the drywall. You know that? Yeah. When it takes a dive, mount it there and it takes a dive in and then it terminates in a connector and then the wiring. And you do want to have the wiring as short as possible. That's a goal, but I okay. mean, the okay. length that's provided is acceptable. So I was picturing an access panel, which would be white and flush with the drywall. It'd be surface mounted. So we would go ahead and put a three quarter inch offset nipple in here, uh -huh. mount it there, offset right into here and terminate on the breaker. Uh -huh. And, but in order to view it, you would have to take the access cover off, which is toolless. You just put your fingertips in there and pop it, pop it free. So it's relatively convenient. Okay. You got, it's out of sight. For some, they may consider that an advantage. Others may consider that a disadvantage. But uh, yeah. Do you have to have the cover on the access panel? No. What, does it look really unfinished then if it is, if it's left off? You'd see the inside of the wall. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, I mean, it's trimmed out around the perimeter so the access itself. So there's no back on it? Correct. So we can do a non-metallic liquid tight that flexes into the wall and we could mm -hmm. find that spot and bring it over and mount this on the further side of things but still clear the panel cover which will come to about the center of that stud. Yeah. And just flex into the wall and surface mount it and then you slide that drywall back there but yeah. right where that flex transitions into the wall that's oh, but you can yeah. you can mud it yeah yeah i see what you're saying and pretty it up but it is yeah. a little bit complicated so that would travel just like that but into the wall right right so if you can make the drywall look good i think the installation would look good yeah yeah i can probably do that okay so what we're going to do, we're just going to put a two by across here or something, or two, mm -hmm. and then mount, surface mount it to that. Yeah. And uh, actually need a piece of scrap drywall probably to put behind it so it's out the right distance, or if this is flex. I like, yeah, being flex, you'll have that okay. latitude. Okay. So you could almost get like a, 
get a little bit fancy and use a hollow washer box and mount it inside of a washer box so that it's white and it's finished and it's in the wall and then we use the nipple trick but that, that impedes your R value of insulation a little bit but not significantly. So then that way it's sitting there, but you've got a finished appearance to it. Yeah, I think if we if we put it here and, and I'll mud around it, I'll figure out how to mud around it, it'll be between the two panels. It'll look like it's a part of the installation mm -hmm. and it's and it's visible. Okay. And uh, so when this thing wears out. Mm -hmm. You would take the four screws out, which would cause it to you know, okay. have the flexibility to come out. Okay. You may impede your drywall joint if you're not sensitive, and then you would spin it off to the left okay. under your connections and slide it out mm -hmm. and sleeve the new one in, spin it onto the threads and four screws to mount it again. Okay, so I think tomorrow on my way here, I'm gonna call AES when I'm en route. They're gonna give us a one to three hour window, which is really unpredictable. We're gonna then work our tails off to just get as far as possible. When they show up, we pivot and we just focus on this until the power comes back up. I think you and I will be able to execute on this and we can keep Bruce busy on securing the wire through the basement. We'll make sure that plan is laid out. Uh, we'll get that penetration through the house probably first thing for the disconnect on the exterior that can get caulked and mounted. And this will probably then take the majority of our day. And we've got some of the peripheral items done. Bruce is gonna do a quick material pickup tomorrow morning for a couple odds and ends. Bruce, we will take that two by six if you want to put it over there. If you want to display the permit in a window, do you want to do that? Okay. Or just really, well, it's not a, the, the inspectors often don't show up and if they don't show up, then it's null and void. Um, but we will call for a rough inspection. I'll probably go ahead and schedule that at some point tomorrow, I'll contact them, uh, our office for scheduling. Okay. Right, day one is always the slowest because you got the layout, you've got some of the grind, and then day two is when you're like, oh my goodness, look at what, everything we did. Yeah. And so I think, I think we're in good shape. Speaking of sweating, that's what you did for the copper, and that is what we will be doing on part three. Join us here and subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money with imperfect science.